First up to the plate is Katie. At just over 19 stone, she puts her weight gain down to not drinking enough water and skipping meals. I don't think I've had regular breakfast since I started secondary school. Once or twice, normally on a Saturday, I'll go out with my best friend and we'll go and have lunch, but even that tends to be a jacket potato shop. So, Katie, would it be fair to say that you really are not eating your breakfast or your lunch? Not as often as I should. Let's find out. <laughs> have a look at this. It's just one o'clock now. It's lunchtime. Hopefully, she's going to have lunch and we'll catch what she eats on camera. I think you'll find Katie doesn't eat lunch, Duncan. However, her daughter and niece have to be fed, so the family head into an American diner. Bye-bye, Miss American Pie. Hello, chicken wings and fajitas. Just remember, Katie, chicken wings today equals bingo wings tomorrow. That was yummy. Katie thinks her weight gain could be down to not drinking enough water. But there's no diluting the fact that Katie just enjoys her food. It's home time for the family. But hang on, Katie's making a detour, Duncan. Donuts, quick! She's got the donuts with her in the car now. Just following her to see where she's going to eat those and how many of them she has herself. Back at the flat, Duncan's waiting to see if Katie and the donuts have come home full circle. Ah, there she is. And it's a jam dunk. Really? Clearly, you do not care about your diet today, Katie. The next day, the lady who doesn't lunch is having lunch. Inside, our spy, Cameron, keeps tabs. Cameron spots Katie making her way to the salad bar, where she deftly pulls a pint of mayonnaise. <laughs> Let us see if this is just the tip of the iceberg. She had a chicken mushroom and cheese stack with fries and a lemonade. If Katie thinks this is a healthy meal, she really is out to lunch. The following day, self-confessed lunch skipper Katie is, you guessed it, having lunch. But at least it's a healthy jacket potato on the menu. Spectacular. But I, I take a look at this snapshot provided by our informer, revealing cheese and beans, coleslaw and side order of garlic bread, all washed down with a fizzy drink. You're telling me that, oh, no, I don't really get to eat breakfast and lunch, certainly not as often as I should. And at least four days that we were following you, you were out eating lunch with your mates who dobbed you in. To me, I'm going out to socialise with a friend. The food kind of just comes along with the socialising side of it. I don't think I consciously go for the unhealthy option. We asked our dietitian, Lynn Garton, what effect Katie's lunchtime habits are having on her waistline. Now, if during surveillance was a typical week for you, the amount of calories that you'd be getting from those foods eaten and prepared outside the home is equivalent... Oh, God. ..to... She's going to show me something bad. ..the same number of calories as you'd find in these 40 cheeseburgers. I feel slightly sick. <laughs> That doesn't look nice. Seeing all the cheeseburgers really did bring it into perspective about how much I was eating, and to see something look that revolting really does kind of put you off wanting to do it again. Katie is a social scoffer. If, like Katie, you enjoy eating out with friends, here are some tips to make sure it doesn't damage your diet. Select foods prepared with healthier cooking techniques, such as steaming, grilling, poaching or stir-frying. Banish the bread basket and get a free app on your phone which can help you do some simple calorie mathematics to make sure you don't exceed your daily allowance. Next up to face the facts is train ticket inspector Michael, who's puzzled why he's almost 20 stone. I don't think I'd do anything different to other people. I think my diet is quite balanced. Well, let's see what we found when you started your shift at work, but then you came back in the evening for dinner with Katie. The trains may not always run on time, but Michael's like clockwork when it comes to buying his lunchtime usual, and Cameron is hot on his tail. 
Michael's just gone into the shop and bought lunch. He bought soft drink, some crisps, and a triple sandwich. Well, that's exactly what Michael told me he has for lunch, so no mystery there. But is his diet on the healthy track at home? In the buffet car this evening, it's home-cooked lasagna on the menu. That is actually awesome. It does look so yummy. Shall I put you normally eat? <laughs> Thanks, Katie. I'm leaving this in there, I <laughs> sounds about right. With a portion that size, Michael's healthy eating is a thing of the pasta. Now you see? Now you don't. <laughs> Finished? Are you sure? If you want more, go get more. No. I thought so. Michael's chug chugging back into the kitchen, <laughs> running to get more. Michael's appetite in the evenings is like a runaway train. The following night with roast lamb on the menu, Michael gets some sheep thrills in the kitchen. And with Katie's huge portion sizes, he's a mutton for punishment. Hey, babe. Sorry, Katie, but tonight, Michael only has eyes for you. The next night, left to his own devices, Michael's causing carnage in the kitchen. Dishing out punishment to some battered fish, stuffed sausages, waffles and baked beans. And this culinary criminal isn't done yet. He pepper sprays the pitiful plate with curry powder. It's disgusting. What? Before dousing it with tomato sauce. <laughs> <laughs> so embarrassing. And in just five minutes, Michael's thoroughly killed off his taste buds with a salt and battery. Those beans and sausages covered in ketchup literally look like a crime scene. <laughs> it like... tasted nice. But then when you were cooking the lamb and you served up that meal, that was huge. I know how much you'll eat, so I kind of dish it up. Lynn, what does it mean for Michael when he gets back from work? He's not really eaten that much all day. What's going on in those meals? You, you're eating huge portions, Michael, and a number of those meals are coming to over one and a half thousand calories. That's a lot. That is a lot. We asked Lynn to give Michael a breakdown of just how many calories were in his most calorific evening meal. First of all, Michael had two potato waffles, providing 156 calories. The battered fish, 224 calories. Five sausages each come into 80 calories, so in total, 400 calories. Three quarters of a tin of baked beans come into 253 calories. He added a dessert spoonful of curry powder, 14 calories. To finish it off, Michael added five large tablespoons of tomato ketchup, 115 calories. In total, this meal of Michael's came to 1,162 calories. I'm on my way to see Dr David Lewis, one of the UK's top food psychologists, to find out if there's ways we can all eat less. So, David, you have brought me to a restaurant, but I know you well enough. You're not going to be treating me to dinner, are you? <laughs> I'm afraid there's no such thing as a free lunch where I'm concerned, Anna. Today, I'm running an experiment to show that where we eat controls how much we eat. Ah, OK. So how are we going to test this today, then, David? Well, we've got two groups, and both groups of diners are going to be given exactly the same meal. The difference is the context in which they're going to be given this food. In one group, we have got a kind of a fast food restaurant set up. We've got bright lights and loud music. And the other group are going to eat in a much more relaxed situation with soft lighting and soft music. And what the research suggests is that the people will eat more 
in the fast food situation, because of the bright lights, because of the loud music, it's actually been designed to encourage people to eat more and to eat more rapidly. So it's simply because with the bright lights and the music, it's, it's more stimulating. Yes, but the key message here is because they're eating it fast, their stomach, in a sense, is not going to have time to send their brain a message say, OK, I've had enough, so they're going to overeat. To test this theory, we're treating a group of foodies to dinner in this South East London restaurant, where we've created two distinct dining areas. Each volunteer will be served an identical meal, all carefully measured out by Dr David and his team. Our diners think they've been invited to take part in a study about social interaction while eating out, but all we really want to know is how much they eat. Dinner is served. Find out later if lingering over your food makes you eat less, or if eating in a fast food joint makes you bolt down your burger and stuff those french fries.